Smoking is one of the most widespread activities in the world today, and its role as increasing the risk of lung cancer is well known worldwide. And although it might seem obvious that smoking cigarettes increases your risk of lung cancer, in fact this relationship wasn't really known until about 50 years ago. Now if you lived at a time when there wasn't this established link between cigarettes and lung cancer, you couldn't just say that there was a link, you'd have to actually prove it. And the way you do that is using a study. So the study is what links your thought or your hypothesis that smoking cigarettes increases lung cancer with some actual data to prove that. And because this deals with a major determinant of health and the frequency of disease in the population, this falls under the field of epidemiology. So we'll just note that down here. Now it turns out that this was done for the first time in 1956 with the British Doctor Study, which for the first time definitively linked smoking cigarettes with an increased risk of lung cancer. And there's many different types of epidemiological studies. There's randomized control trials, which we'll just denote RCT. There's cohort studies. And the third type, which is the so-called case control studies. And each of them has their pros and cons. But in this video, we're going to take a step back from them and talk about some more general principles of these studies. Now, the first way to break these study types apart is to consider the difference between experimental and observational. So I'll just put at the top of the page here, experimental on the left and observational on the right. And we'll go through the individual differences between each of them. Now the key difference between experimental studies and observational studies has to do with a parameter called randomization. So I'll just write that here in the middle between them, randomization. So what is randomization? Well, let's look at an example to try and figure that out. So let's say we have a population of 10 people and I've already drawn them in. And let's say that the red people here live in hot weather climates and the blue people here live in cold weather climates. So if this experiment were to be randomized, into let's say people receiving a certain drug and people receiving no drug, this status of drug versus no drug would be denoted or would be assigned by the experimenter. So you'd expect a mixture of people in the drug group, some people who live in hot and some people who live in cold weather, and the same in the no drug group. On the other hand, in an observational study, you're relying on differences within the population itself and the experimenter doesn't assign which group participants fall into. That's determined by the characteristics of the participants themselves. So in an observational study, for example, you might be looking at people who live in cold weather versus people who live in hot weather. And that's denoted here. So all the blue people who live in cold weather are grouped together because of some characteristic that the experimenter can't control. And the same for people who are grouped together because they live in hot weather. So this parameter of randomization is what determines the difference between an experimental study, which has randomization, and an observational study, which does not. Now we can further break down observational studies into two different groups. Descriptive studies, which are right here in green, and analytic studies, which are right here in purple. So what's the difference between a descriptive and an analytic study? Well, it really looks at what type of questions they answer. So an analytic study, for example, is going to answer the question, why? So if we were to take this population of people who live in hot climates and do an analytic study, we might ask the question, why is there an increased risk of, say, lung cancer in this population that lives in hot weather? And when we do our study, we're looking for the reason why this population has an increased risk of lung cancer. A descriptive study, on the other hand, asks a different set of questions. It looks at who, what, when, and sometimes even where. So if we were to take, for example, this cold population and do a descriptive study, we might look for the number of cases of lung cancer that appear, or where they occur, or who they occur in, older people or younger people, for example. So it's a different type of question between a descriptive study and an analytic study. The British doctor's study looked at who developed lung cancer, those who smoked or those who didn't. And because of that, it falls under the category of descriptive observational studies. The next parameter by which we're going to separate the different types of epidemiological studies is by directionality. So let's examine that here. Now directionality refers to which is observed first in a particular study, the exposure or the outcome. So let's say hypothetically that we have some kind of exposure that takes place right here at this peach, at this peach line. So say that's when you smoke cigarettes. And the outcome, let's put down here, let's say that's the development of lung cancer. And we'll just note that this line, this white line, is our timeline, so we'll denote it T. 
Now in a study with forward directionality, the exposure is known before the outcome. And the study progresses forward in time, seeing whether or not these individuals develop the outcome of interest. So for example, let's say you have 10 patients who smoke cigarettes. And when the study begins, you know that they smoke, but none of them have developed any disease. And you'll follow them to see how many develop lung cancer, which we'll, de which we'll denote here in red, and how many don't, which we'll denote here in blue. A backward study is the reverse. So it starts when you have an outcome. So we'll label this backward, and it looks to see which exposure caused that specific outcome. So for example, let's say we have 10 patients with lung cancer, and we'll denote that here uh, with these red individuals, and we're gonna look back and see how many of them smoked, which we'll denote those individuals here in white, and how many of them didn't, and we'll denote those individuals here in orange. So when it comes to directionality, whether or not it's forwards or backwards depends on which you know first, the exposure or the outcome. So in the forward directionality, you have a group of people with an exposure, and you track whether or not they develop the outcome. And in a study with backwards directionality, the study starts once the outcome has already been determined, and you look back to see which exposure caused that specific outcome. The British doctor study that we noted at the beginning of this video followed a number of individuals who smoked over a long time to see what kind of diseases they developed. So because of this, this was a study with forward directionality. Now the third and final way that we can break down these different types of epidemiologic studies is by timing. So we'll describe timing in this block right here. And again, we have to do with a timeline. So we'll go ahead and draw our timeline and we'll label it T. But this time we have to do with whether or not the study starts prior or after the health outcome occurs. So let's go ahead and say uh, right here in green, we'll say that our study starts right here. And in one example, we'll say that the outcome happened before the study starts. So in this example, let's say we have patients who already have lung cancer, which we'll denote here in red. And we're looking back to see when or how or why these patients develop this specific disease. And if it occurs in this order, the study occurs once the outcome is already determined. This is called a retrospective study. So I'll just label this retrospective. Now, if it occurs in the other direction, where the study starts before the outcome is determined, this is called a prospective study. So I'll label this prospective. So in this example, you might have a group of people who smoke cigarettes, which we'll denote here in white and you're gonna track them over time to see how many of them develop whatever outcome you're looking for, be that lung cancer or some other type of disease. So a retrospective study looks back once the outcome is determined to see what caused that particular outcome, whereas a prospective study starts before the outcome is determined. In the case of the British doctor study, it began before the outcome was known, which would make it a prospective study. So now that we've looked at these three different ways to assess epidemiological studies, we're much better equipped to assess any other study we may come across in the future. And we should know that we can combine these words in different ways. So for example, you might have an experimental, forward directionality, prospective study, or you may have a descriptive, backwards directionality, retrospective study. They can be combined in different ways, but now that we know what they mean, we can assess what type of study we're dealing with. And in the next video, we're going to look at some specific types of studies that we may come across.